Warning, this show contains strong language and topics that some viewers may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, Super Saiyan. Welcome to another edition of Super Saiyan. I'm Eddie Kwame. As always, it's Liam Dunn. I'm a god, Bill Godwick with the Universal Time. Roman Reigns. Where's Ken Angle? Nobody knows. I am it, Eddie Kwame. I think you forgot the comments again. Hello Super City and welcome to another edition of the Super. I am Andy Club and with me as always is Sam Brooks. Please tell me why is it whenever it's us two there's too much to talk about and when it's you and Liam there's nothing to talk about. It makes it very awkward. Why is it what? us two that draws in all of the news that could ever happen has anyone died ever since we started the show? Have you checked? Anyone died? Anyone relinquished a championship? George Adam Steelers died. Okay, but he didn't die in the last five seconds, did he? No, no, he didn't die. No, in the last five no, he didn't. Many people have died this week. Are we talking about any of them? Do you know anything about any of them? George Adam Steelers dead. <laughs> I didn't get any notes on him. Fuck. Ivan Koloff also died. Do you want to, like, restart this? No, I don't. I want to read the comments. You want to remind me what we discussed last week? Last week, we talked about Randy Orton, and he decided, I don't want to face Bray Wyatt anymore. And also, something else that I forget. So last week... He talks about Randy Orton potentially relinquishing his Royal Rumble win. Spoiler alert, it's going to be him versus Bray at Mania. Calm down. And there was also a couple of other things. Uh, Bullet Club vs. The Shield says, Sam, do a gif of Andy fisting his hand and post it in the next episode. Here it is. I hope you're happy. Yeah, the better question is, why did you do that in the first place? Because that's what he does! Who does who does what? What are you talking Roman about? Roman Reigns says the weird thing with his arm. He he cocks his arm, cause his uh, his hand is secretly a gun, and the Superman punch is really him firing a gun. No, really, he cocks it and then he punches the ground. So really, he's just shooting at the ground. Yeah. That's pointless, that's isn't pointless. it? Yeah. yeah, he should just punch the ground. He should just no. Don't. He should just punch the person. He should just do. He should just no. Punch just the don't man. do the cock. Don't do that thing. Just do the. Do the. Punch. I can't see what you're doing. No, he just goes and then hits the ground. That's what you should do. Right. Anyway, Brendan right. Davis. That sounds familiar. He says, mm. "Andy needs to stay off for crack." We've talked about this. I'm Are you relapsing, Andy? No. Because I'm not on crack. I feel like your your slip into insanity at the end of last week's show was very telling of your new habit. I didn't slip into insanity. You went on about Emma singing her theme because that's, for an uncomfortably that's what long going to time. Turn into. It took that's me a while evolution. to decipher what you were trying to say. What do you, do you, that's how it goes. Do, 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 do. That's how it goes. She does a thing with her hands. You're confusing two parts of her life there. Uh, M. Gunter says, Wasn't a large part of Rosa Mendez's career spent in rehab? I think a large part of her career was spent backstage. Because okay, I didn't see yeah. her. She had, like, what, ten matches? Something like that. In my 11 years. one of them. Yeah, maybe. I didn't keep track. She went to rehab. At one point. That was fun. Maybe not for her. Or for anyone. No, obviously not, no. No. So, Draven G says, Before Owens turned on Jericho, we saw him talking to Triple H. Now, there are rumours going around that we might be seeing Triple H bring together his creations as a new incarnation of evolution, with Triple H in the role of Flair, Joe in the role of Batista, and Kevin Owens in the role of Triple H. So my question, well, if this rumour is true, 
Who would be the Randy Orton of the group? A returning Finn Balor, perhaps? Well, Kevin Owens did say he does know how to play the game. Mm. It's almost as if there's a connection there. Just maybe. Connection. <laughs> Who's going to be the new Randy Orton of this new Triple H Creations group? Finn, maybe, but you'd have to turn him heel, and I don't think that's in their plans. Mm. Oh, you know who'd be good? Who? No way, Jose. No. No, he's great. Because you have, like, you have, like, Triple H, who's being, like, really, like, stern and serious. And you have Joe just killing Sami Zayn every week. And you have Kevin Owens cutting promos in a spotlight. And then you have No Way Jose dancing in the background. You don't want to tell me that you don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. You are an idiot. I am not an idiot. Good comeback. No, no, no. Bobby Roode would be perfect, wouldn't he? There you go. See, I'm a genius. Look no, you're that. not. Yes, but I will take that, and I will make that into a Photoshop right now. Look at that. Look at that proposed stable. Isn't that beautiful? It's amazing. It's the best stable ever. But is it going to happen? No. No. Remind me again what we're doing here. So, we're going to talk about wrestling news. That's what we do here. So, unfortunately, George the Animal Seal has passed away. George the Animal Seal, uh, who was a Hall of Famer, uh, has sadly passed away at the age of 79. Steel was one of the wildest and most unpredictable superstars in sports entertainment history. Yet, despite his green tongue, hairy torso, an insatiable appetite for turnbuckle pads, the animal was a very well-educated man. Prior to breaking into sports entertainment, Steele received his master's degree from Central Michigan University and became a high school teacher and a wrestling coach. Ah, see, something you don't know. Uh, he also has um, been a part of the WWE for nearly 20 years when he was wrestling, and he's been managed by the likes of the Grand Wizard. Classy Freddy Whoa, whoa, no, no, hang on. What? The Grand Wizard. Um, oh. Wrestling. Not might, cake, cake, not someone You might want to clarify cake. that, buddy. All right. This is what this is a press release that WWE have posted. What do you want me to do? I don't know. Maybe give me some backstory as to how he was managed by the KKK. He wasn't managed by the KKK. Grand he was Wizard, a man mate. Wales. Huh? You wanna... He was also managed by Classy Freddy Blassie, Captain Lou Albano. Uh, and Mr. Fuji. Mr. His Fuji? Classic main... What? Who's Mr. Fuji? Fuji! I've heard of Mr. Fuji, but you said Mr. That's Fuji. That's right, Who's oh, Mr. Fuji? <laughs> He's had classic main events against Bruno San Martino, uh, Pedro Moraes, Bob Backlund, and he's even come close to winning the WWE Championship on many different occasions. Cool. And unfortunately as well, uh, Ivan the Russian Bear Karlov has died at the age of 74 as well. Uh, he uh, was known as being this kind of Soviet Russian guy. Um, and he died of liver cancer, which sucks. Um, he actually debuted as an Irish villain originally. As Red McNulty. Uh, it was only until 1967 he decided uh, that he was going to be Ivan Koloff, which led him to WWWF glory. Because that's that's how far back uh, his cap went. Um, did he team up with the Iron Sheik? I don't know. Okay, fair. So, yeah. Um, Two legends have sadly passed away, roughly about the same age, in the space of a week, which really sucks. Sad. So. Why did you start the show with this? Because I like to get the depressing stuff out of the way. Okay. I don't know anything about either of these people. Well, I mean, I swear they were both in the gimmick about Royal at WrestleMania 17. The WrestleMania that I haven't seen? Why have you not seen that? Because I have other things to do with my life. Well, I think they're both Hall of Famers. So speaking of the Hall of Fame, 
DDP Diamond Dallas Page is going into the WWE Hall of Fame uh, and will be inducted as a part of the class of 2017 during WrestleMania 33 week. Uh, DDP joins Kurt Angle, Teddy Long, and the Rock and Roll Express. Uh, Page would go on to win three WCW championships, two United States titles, and four tag team championships throughout his career in WCW, and he won the Intercontinental and Tag Team Championships in WWE. We don't talk about the stalker thing, or the fact that he was like a life coach, because, ignore that. Um, so yeah, DDP is going into the Hall of Fame. Bang, and all that. Good. You know, when you were talking about his accolades and you randomly said Paige went on to win several World Heavyweight titles in WCW, I didn't think you meant him. I meant the Diamond Dallas Page. Diamond Dallas Page. Mm -hmm. Not British Page. No, not that Page. No. She was we'll never in WCW. That, um, so yeah, good. Finally. Uh, yeah, it's about time. Yeah, the guy's been uh, doing many a great thing recently with his, with his yoga. Start your mom's yoga. Sponsor. Sponsor us, maybe. If you want to wanna at me on Twitter, you know. I mean, yeah, Paige, I, I want to do a different form of exercise. So if you could send me a DVD for free, that'd be great. Yeah, just give it to him for free. Because as we all well we... know, he's not going to pay for anything until the day he dies. <laughs> That's why I still have this headset. Yeah, um, when's that new headset coming, buddy? Uh, I don't know. Uh, so basically, yeah, um, it's good uh, that Paige is finally going in. A couple of people whose um, lives he has saved include Scott Hall, Jake the Snake. Uh, I believe he helped AJ Styles at one point. I think he's helped, like, Chris Jericho and a whole mm. bunch of other people. Mm. Many, many uh, a different kind of people. So, based on that alone, it's a worthy induction, not gonna lie, but here's a question I want to ask. Yes. I, to be honest, not gonna lie, I'm not really familiar with his career. Okay. How well, familiar are you? Well, you see, the thing is, like, I, I discovered Paige after the Great Invasion angle, which was just the bestest angle. The best storyline of all time, right? Oh, yeah, it was just the greatest. Because mm. um, he debuted in WWE as that kind of weird stalker gimmick. Yeah, do we want to talk about that? Yeah, it was a bit weird. I mean, like, the, he the way I understand this... it is that he <laughs> was really over in WCW. He beat Goldberg at one point, right? Did he ever beat Goldberg? He became WCW champion. I don't know if he... I'm, I'm reading his career now. Um, I don't... Because the thing is, like... He, okay, he was really successful in WCW. Mm. He became a major face in of WCW. Especially right in, right at the end. Um, and then he goes over to WWE, where they write yeah. him in as the stalker of Undertaker's wife? Yes, Sarah, the Undertaker's wife. Uh, he would, like, debut on an episode of Raw before King of the Ring. He challenged... Uh, Take her to a match because he wanted to be made famous at the King of the Ring, and then there's but there's better ways to become famous, Paige. You don't have to fight the Undertaker, and I assume he lost. I think he ran him like Undertaker ran Paige off out the building. Um, oh, he just came ran him over with a car, and I was like, well, that's it's not how you win a wrestling then, match. Because then later on in the invasion, it's all just a bit of a mess. But by SummerSlam of that year, uh. Page was tag team champions with Canyon. Yes, that was it. Um, Chris Canyon. Not following. Okay, Chris Canyon was a WCW guy who was very underrated. Um, but doesn't matter. So basically, he, he won the IC belt as well. What's that? He won a mid-card belt as well, Intercontinental. Yeah, he won the European Championship from Christian at uh, WrestleMania 18. With the gimmick, which he changed from being stalker to being like this life coach. He's like, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. And just starts smiling really weirdly. Um, uh, so he's now living his, uh, his old gimmick. Yeah. He just didn't have the yoga back then. Why did he never win a world title in WWE? I don't What's know. the deal with that? He may, he sound, I know he's a big deal, because I've heard the stories. 
And I know that he was popular in WCW, won their world championship a handful of times. Was it just a case of bad timing for DDP? Because I think Triple H was a champion around that time, right? 2002, 2003, right? Uh, yeah, Chris Jericho had the belt, and then mm. Triple H had it, and he had his reign of terror from about that point on. And that was back when they only had the one belt. Or did they have two at that point? No, they only had the one belt at that point, but then they split it. I feel like he should have at least won it once. Yeah, I mean, but he did win the WCW title in 1999, um, when he defeated Hogan. Uh, wait, so on that night, he stepped inside the square circle with Hogan, Savage, Flair, and Sting in a four corners match for the WCW title. Uh, Randy Savage was the ref, and he would catch Flair in the diamond cutter and won his first ever heavyweight championship. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Hogan, so... Sting, Flair, DDP. Yeah. It's a um... bit of an odd one out. Well, he was getting really over. Oh, I mean, yeah, he not to actually... the right he wasn't over. I'm just saying in terms of like the legacy left behind and the popularity they achieved everywhere, DDP falls I mean, a bit short of the mark. He started his career pretty late. Um, mm, I hear this. Well, like, he was in, like, I swear he's in his late 30s. Um, he's like the he's Alan very... Rickman of the wrestling ring. Yeah, it was really, really weird, because he... DDP made his debut of a die-hard pay-per-view. Then he played Snape. The Undertaker's wife, Stalker. You know. Same thing Alan Brickman did. Of course. Um, so, yeah. I mean, Paige has done pretty awesome things. He was like the main guy in Ready to Rumble as well. The <laughs> oh, great. That, that thing. But no, I mean, Paige... Uh, Paige deserves to be in there. Um... How about we talk about someone who I'm excited to see in the Hall of Fame finally? Who is that? Teddy motherfucking Long, buddy. Yes, holy shit. He um, is the single greatest character ever made by WWE. That, that's not true. It's absolutely but... true. The way he came out every week on SmackDown, in the heyday, might I add, in the mid-2000s, that was when SmackDown was the show to watch, much like it is now. Yeah, wait, in the mid-2000s, that's not that's absolutely correct. And then Teddy Long comes out, and he's like, holla holla, book a tag team match. Then you go one on one with The Undertaker. It'll be Sheamus and Randy Orton in the main event of SmackDown. Made of a dance, made of a theme song. He's the greatest character ever made. Convince me otherwise. Who's, be who's better than Teddy Long? Uh, Eric Bischoff. He didn't book many tag matches. I don't think no, he's better. You don't, no, no, no. He, that's all Teddy Long would ever do. What did Eric Bischoff tag. ever do for wrestling? Well, Eric Bischoff's character, in theory, in the world of kayfabe, created the Elimination Chamber. Oh, that, that HLA, thing. No one, oh, yeah, great. What, uh, did, what even is that? A hot lesbian action. <laughs> okay, what is it, though? Look, I was a teenager at the time, okay? Uh, the other, what wait, other thing you, he wait, did... Wait, hang on. HLA. Yes. You want to explain this? I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, basically, Eric Bischoff came up with a segment, his character came up with a segment, where, um, potentially two women would just start making out in the ring. Reasons. But then he got to the point where he would get, Wait, like... Wait, no, wanted... you're kidding, right? No, this is a thing, Sam. No, you're messing this... with me. No, this exists. Google the shit. It exists. Um, you want me to Google hot lesbian action? No, just put HLA Eric Bischoff. You don't have to put in that other thing. Alright, if you're lying to me, I'm going to give you several kidney punches. Fuck off, I'm not worried I'd be HLA, lying! Because it's you, and you love to get that back at me for all of the things I do to you. No, this is true, but this is not one of those times. I, okay, so... my, my brain quashed and I put in HLA Andy Kwan into Google, and that's not, <laughs> that's not what I'm trying you. to find out. Okay, HLA, that's it, right? Yes. Eric, okay, you want film? That does it. Oh my god. <laughs> See? What the, oh my god, what? Yep, I told you this, this, this is true. 2000... The Lesbians. Yep. 
Actually, there was a segment at Unforgiven one year. I can't remember the year. I think it was 2003 or something. Where they had... They, he wanted Stephanie to join and do HLA. But then he brings out like the ugliest woman you've ever seen. And it turned out to be Rikishi. And then Rikishi, like... Rubbed his ass and Bischoff's face. Okay. Give me a sec. <laughs> Why? Why? Where, where are you going? Um. HLA. Yes. Number one, why have I not heard of this before now? And two, why are you the one introducing it to me? Because I was a young teenager when this was going on. 2002. Were you even born in 2002? Yes! Were you? I was 11. So you weren't a fucking teenager then, were you? <laughs> I was 11 teen years old. Yeah, brilliant. Well done. Classic teenager. Oh, how would you do, fellow kids? I'm 11. Look at me. I'm a teenager. I was, I was mature for my age. So mature that you excelled into the teenage years. Two years before you were supposed to. Exactly. Teddy Long is the greatest character ever made in WWE. Prove me wrong. I can't. Who's better? No one's better. Exactly. I'm glad that we're in agreement, finally. And I'm happy he's going in the Hall of Fame. I don't know who the Rockers are. The Midnight Express. Who's going... Who? What? What's the tag team? The Midnight Express. Midnight Express. Who? Who? Okay. Oh, no, sorry. I'm an idiot. The Rock and Roll Express. Rock and Roll Express. Who? Who Rock. is going in there? Who is this? Do we uh, even know? Rock... I'm going to Google this. Just the in case you got Express, it wrong. Uh, is Ricky Morton and who is that? Ricky Morton and the other one? Uh, like they were in. Um, so Ricky Morton and the other one. Great. Yeah, they're 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 in TNA Robert Apocalypto. Robert Gibson is his name. That's it. They're in they're in TNA Apocalypto. Those guys? Yes, the old guys. That's them. Oh my god! I swear that's them. <laughs> This is a weak class this year, <laughs> considering ah, that the ah, guy ah, I'm ah, most ah, excited for is Teddy Long. What? Who's the headliner? Well, how can it be weak? You oh, yeah, DDP Kurt and Kurt Angle. I forgot about Kurt Angle. I, I didn't watch Kurt Angle. I wasn't in the wrestling when he was there. Oh, I joined him so like the end of 2007, all right? He was in TNA. What do you want me to do? Why? Oh, sorry, Dad. I wasn't around back when it was 1800. Bruno Sammartino was in his 1500th day reign. Sorry, I don't know these things. I'm a new fan, technically, even though I've been watching for about eight years, but still, besides the point. Wait, what year? I joined at the tail end of 2007. So it's been ten years. I can count. <laughs> Tell me about Mr. Fuji, Andy. Mr. Fuji mm. was... A manager. Don't actually fucking talk to me about Mr. Fuji, you idiot. Oh. Kurt Angle, okay, good. The rest of the class, DDP's good. Ted Long is the best name out of all of them. Fine. So, yeah, Paige is finally going in. Paige is, is in like the, the Hall of Fame? Oh, shit, that's is young. She, no. Is she ready? Die, they DDP! As a base DDP? Is... Who's DDP? Is... Does he wear a toupee? Oh my god, I hate you. So basically, is is he the only WCW guy in the Hall of Fame besides him Sting? Let's look this up. Because I feel like he is. Because there's no Goldberg. No, Ma well, do you count Macho Man? No. Oh, what? Yeah. oh there's the WCW Within... Hall of Fame. Uh, well, Macho Man's in the Hall of Fame, so you could count him. Um, did you know WCW had a Hall of Fame? Yes, they did, yeah. Why is it so much better than the WWE's? Because Look, WWE's Lou Fez, like... Vern Gagne, Mr. Wrestling 2, Eddie Graham, Harley Race. Oh, you know, I have the Crusher. Okay, Dick the Bruiser. Right. Ole Anderson, Masked Assassin. Okay, Dusty Rhodes, I Know Key, Poffo, Funk. Why is this more in prestigious member Hall of Fame that has Drew Carey in it? Because WCW died. Fair point. Mm, yeah, okay, WCW guy going into the Hall of Fame. That's alright. I think Goldberg will be in next. Uh, yeah, probably. 
He's deserving. Well, yeah, but his WWE run was a bit naff. Okay, his WCW run was better. Until he got cattle prodded by Scott Hall. That wasn't his fault. I know. He didn't decide to get himself cattle prodded <laughs> to end his own streak. <laughs> Is that how you end it? Well, we're going to find out next week when Liam Dunn officially takes the cattle prod to Andy and the streak ends. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Anywho, uh, so yeah, um, the Hall of Fame, I don't think it's actually looking that bad this year. I think it's looking all right. There, there have been worse years, like... Well, who went in last year? I swear um, was Sting one. went in last year. Yeah, there's been worse years. So. Sting's alright, isn't he? No, I mean, everyone else who went in last year besides Sting. Let's have a look at who like, went in last year so that we know like, what we're ja- talking about. Like, Jacqueline went in. What's wrong with Jacqueline? The, the Godfather went in. No, he didn't. Last year? Is it last year? Might have been year know. before that. Let's have a look and see. Let's actually be researchers and figure it out. Okay, so. What? Who went in last year? Sting. The Godfather. Alright. Big Boss Man, Jacqueline, and Stan Hansen. Uh, the Fabulous Free Birds. And Snoop Dogg. Why is Snoop Dogg in the Hall of Fame? Snoop Dogg? Snoop Dogg, yes, is in the Hall of Fame. Inducted by John Cena. Why is he in the Hall of Fame? He showed up in WWE twice. He did WrestleMania, and then he was at WrestleMania again. Right? Then he was at WrestleMania later on that year. Yeah, like, okay, maybe he was—he must have been raw guest host at some point. But why is he there? I think the celebrity wing in general is quite telling. They've had one celebrity induction every year since 2010. Yeah, you don't need a celebrity in there. So 2016 was Snoop Dogg. 2015 was Arnold Schwarzenegger. 2014 was Mr. T. Does that make sense though? Because yeah, Mr. T was okay, Mr. T was at WrestleMania, and he did Starcade as well, right? Uh, I swear he's done two manias. Uh, headlined the first WrestleMania, co-headlined the second, and made appearances and wrestled in WCW, including a match at Starcade in 1994. Okay. Yes, against. Oh, who the fuck was he against? In Starcade. Oh, uh, yeah, he went against. Uh, Let's find out. Uh, uh, Sullivan. Oh yeah, that was it. Yeah. Uh. Year after that, 2013, uh, President Mr. Trump went in, as we all very well know. Year yep. before that, it was Mike Tyson. Did that make some sense? Then it was Drew Carey. That does not That's make any the sense. one I remember, because literally the only thing he ever did was he was in the Rumble that one time, and he tried to give Kane money. Like, if that gets you in the Hall of Fame, what the hell? Why isn't fucking Cindy Lauper in there? Why isn't Joan Rivers in there? Why is... Why isn't... Why isn't, um... Andy Kaufman, I know. Andy Kaufman. There yeah. you go. These are all people that should be inducted into the Hall of Fame. He had one of the greatest feuds of all time with Jerry Lawler. Why the fuck is he not in there? Exactly. And you can read more about this at Superlaw.com, where we have an article. This is how you said we smoothly. I, I, I helped to write an article. You did. You wrote all of it. Every single word. Don't lie. I got it proofread. Um, so... Go read that. It's all about who are the... Betting odds favourites of going into the Hall of Fame, you might you might be surprised as to who they say. And it could be an indication of next year's class. Exactly. Exactly. So, moving on from the Hall of Fame. Yes, we will move on because The Rock, for some reason, appeared on Raw even though he wasn't on screen. Uh, so did he appear on Raw? Or was he, he just there the- before and after Raw? He appeared for the audience. Um, and, uh, like, I guess in the dark segment, uh, The Rock and CM Punk had an interesting exchange after Raw went off the air, as PW Insider reports that The Rock came out to rile up the fans to get them to stay, uh, because he is uh, doing a movie about Paige's life called Fighting With My Family, and they were filming scenes for that movie, uh, the Rock told the fans that they were filming a scene where Paige defeats AJ Lee for the Divas Championship, which led to a CM Punk chant. The Rock said that he was going to call Punk and let them hear the fan chant. And he did that. And there's video online of him doing it, as The Rock then tried to get uh, CM Punk on the phone via FaceTime, but Punk didn't respond. Um, but CM Punk would go on to respond on Twitter posting, 
Thanks, Los Angeles. Nice to hear from you at Staples Center. And the reason why he didn't pick up the phone was because he was walking Larry, which is his dog. And it was Oh, thank God. I thought you meant it wasn't a dog. I thought you meant it was a slave. I I like you had to specify that for us. He just has a gimp named Larry, but he walks in the streets of a windy city. Yeah. No shit, it's his dog. Why did you have to specify that? It could have been a cat. Or a koala. Or a koala is a dog. Or some kind of kami. Do you know what animals are? Because <laughs> I don't think you do. You sound like an alien pretending to know what animals are. I am not an alien! Uh, so did you walk basically... your koala this Sunday? <laughs> I hear they are good house pets. Fuck off. So basically, um, yeah, so... This caused a stir because uh, PW Insider also reports that WWE had nothing to do with The Rock calling CM Punk last night, and they were said to be very upset because no CM shit, Punk, because uh, obviously CM Punk w- walked out the company in January 2014, uh, and he went on the Art of Wrestling podcast. Mm, we know, uh, we know the story. And all that crap. Um, the Rock decided in the moment to make the call to pop the live crowd at Staples Center. And at one point, uh, a fan did yell out um, that they were going to turn off his mic, and The Rock said, they better not turn off my mic. So, oh dear. So there's a lot of meat to this story. Yeah. First of all, uh, he's making a movie about Paige. Yes. Um, What the fuck? I, I tried to explain this to Keelan, but he didn't get it either. So basically, what is happening is, is that, the, the Rock saw a documentary that was done before Paige went to WWE, and it was about her life mm. up until that point. He thought it was brilliant, and he's like, I have to continue the story, because I am Dwayne Johnson, and this is what I do. I'm Dwayne um, Johnson, and I do what I want. Well, to be fair, he can do whatever the fuck he wants. He can do. He's, like, he's literally probably the most famous man on Earth. Like... He is also built like a brick shit house. Um, so he's doing uh, a movie, and I think he's getting Stephen Merchant. Yeah, Stephen Merchant has been signed to direct. That's also known as Ricky Gervais's tall friend. And Wheatley from Portal Two. Um, was it Wheatley? Yes, it was Wheatley. Yes. Um, so basically, uh, he's getting a bunch of people involved. Um, I think the weirdest element of it all for me is the. Yeah, they have, like, actors playing roles and everything, but they got fucking Rosita from TNA to play AJ Lee. Really? I think it was one of the fucking, like, Latina women from TNA, that Latin American stable they had. Let me look this up. The really weird thing as well is that they, uh, like, WWE have produced AJ Lee, um, like a Titan Tron of AJ Lee's and like the Mini Tron and all the production stuff for the new set. It's just like, so either you had that like uh, in, in your archive or you made that specifically just to hold on to it just in case. Or they just did it for that shoot, which seems very strange. Um, so it's Taya Trinidad, known as Rosita in TNA, playing AJ Lee. It's really, really weird to see fake Paige and fake AJ Lee come out to actual Paige and AJ Lee music and Titantron and Minitron yeah, and everything. It's very strange. I, I don't... It's not like Paige is retired. She's still signed to the company. Yeah. She's still there. More... Well, it I would don't... make more sense if it was AJ Lee. This is weird. This is weird. This is like if we made a movie about your life and we got Warwick Davis to play you. Like it's that level of weirdness. I would love that. Why? Can we do that? I'm trying to. He's very hard to get hold of, believe it or not. But it's weird, right? Isn't it strange? Am I it crazy for odd. not understanding this entire thing? Like, no. Why? You're not, you're not the only one. Why is Keelan Why is Barack doing this? I don't know. I mean, I just... yeah, he can do whatever he wants, and I'm sure he actually wants to do this, but why? <laughs> why now? Why not 20 years from now where it makes sense to do all of this? You know, it's weird. AJ Lee retired in, what, 2015? Two years ago? Yeah, it's two years ago this mania. 
Because she had the Mania match, and then I think a match on Raw, and then retired. She's wearing yeah. a baby shirt. Yeah, it was 2015. The AJ, the AJ Lee thing would make more sense. I mean, yeah, that yeah. makes sense, because she's not with the company, and she's retired, and whatever. CM Punk stuff, all of that. Paige is still employed. And was running roughshod with Alberto Del Rio in most recent news. That's the thing she's been doing lately. Because she's either suspended or injured or both at the same time. She was close to being fired like five months ago. Now she's being having a movie made about her. I don't get it. I don't, just, is, is WWE like... I, I mean, I guess they're helping out, but... I do wonder how much of a say they're getting in this. Probably none at all. Yeah, I mean, besides some allowing to use... Well, I mean, there is that. We can't be stupid here, but let's face facts for a second. Rock doesn't need WWE anymore. Yeah, He's I, made I it think... on his own. He's a bona fide mega star. He could never show up in WWE ever again, and he would be fine. Yeah, However... I, I, and I just find it a bit odd how... Does, does Rock not know what's happened with Punk? No, he knows. Fucking everyone knows. I, def- I mean, like... I mean, he got... I mean, I, I say he got away with it. I mean, they're not happy, but... Looks like he got away with it. Um, well, the reason why he did it was because the crowd was chanting his name, and he's he actually... He does that thing that you want WWE to do, apparently, and listened to the fans. Yes. I hate that phrase, but yeah, he did that. And he just... He did it because he can. And nothing is going to stop him because the WWE needs him more than he needs them. That's just base. That's how it is. Same thing with Batista, right? It's like, these people made it on their own and they're so famous, but they come back. Apparently, The Rock only comes back because he likes the business, right? If I was The Rock, and you send me out of a 2015 Royal Rumble and get me booed for the first time in over a decade, <laughs> I'd probably never come back after that. Oh, yeah. But now he's filming uh, a movie and it makes no sense. What? What are you doing? Why is this happening? Why is Stephen Merchant there? Why is Vince Vaughn in this movie? I don't understand any of it. It's really weird. Help me. Yeah. Save me. What do we do? Do we go see it? Do we not see it? Do we pan it? Do we complain about it online? We're going to do it anyway. But still, what do we do? Don't. Do we go for a commercial break? I think we should. Yes. Okay. Now we're back. So, uh, he called CM Punk. Yeah, he called CM Punk. And what I find fascinating is that Punk is no longer part of wrestling. He's a UFC fighter, if you can call him that. Well, um, he is. He lost, but he's still a UFC fighter. And But he still responds to this phone call, which is very strange, because you just be like... I don't have to respond to this. I was walking my dog. Fuck off. But he does, and he chooses to respond to it, which I find very strange. People are saying that this is step one of the eventual rebuilding process with WWE, but it's not. No. It's really not. CM Punk may want to come back to wrestling. He's never going to WWE. In the next ten years, I don't think. I'm going to be bold, I'm going to say... He's not going back there anytime soon, because even if he doesn't hate WWE anymore, maybe his wounds have healed. Theirs haven't. That's why they're angry at Barack for doing that in the first place. That's why Vince nearly blew an aneurysm when he was backstage, being like, Why is he doing this? What is he doing? Please don't do that, Rock. They send out a referee to go, Rock, can you please not call former employees in the middle of a ring, the ones we hate, specifically? That would be great. Mr. Rock, please come back. And shoot your movie with us, but don't call CM Punk anymore. Like, but can you can you imagine though if if fucking Zack Ryder did this shit? Or he wouldn't have know. a chance to do this. Well, and just, the instant that he tried, he would be let go. I just I don't know. I mean the the I don't get why you would do that. I know I know I'm the Rock and I'll do what I want. Is a valid excuse, but it's just like... It's because he can do whatever he wants. We've been over this. But it's like, okay, so... CM Punk went on Twitter and was like, thanks, Staples Center, wherever they were. I don't know where they were. Like, It was the Staples Center. Staples Center. They're in LA. LA, right. So, 
says thanks on Twitter. So, okay. WWE still hates his guts and probably never wants to see him until, like, either until he dies or until he gets old and they put him in the Hall of Fame. That's for pattern. That's grim and morbid, but that's for pattern, right? That's what's gonna happen. Because WWE are petty. It's a carny thing, right? Yeah, but they brought back other people and. Such as. Let's go through this list. Such as. Brock Lesnar. Okay, but the way he left wasn't the same as how Punk left. Stone Cold Steve Austin. He left exactly how Punk did. He's like, fuck this, I'm going. Bye bye. And... Yeah, but Steve Austin, at that point. When did that happen? Like 2002? 2002, yeah. He left. So he was already a world famous megastar. He he left in the summer of two thousand and two, and then he was back by February of two thousand and three. Okay, so he's he was a world famous megastar that everyone in a household knew the name of. You can't say the same for CM Punk. It was a case of WWE needing Stone Cold. They had names to fall back on when Punk left. I'm just I'm just shocked Punk is still over. Well, well of course, because it is. like. He was good. Because, I mean, he was good, but, like, I I felt like maybe him getting his ass handed to him by Mickey Gall was, like, a huge... Uh, yeah, it's not like there's ever an underdog story in wrestling, right? Nah, but, I mean, like, you know, you wait two years for this fucking guy to find the debut, and he just gets his head pummeled. It, like, he lasted longer they... than Lesnar did. Lesnar? Hmm. Lesnar lost his debut fight in a shorter amount of time than Punk did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he had a fight like in Japan before that and actually kicked the shit out of the guy. Okay, so CM Punk probably trained for two years. Like, I don't know. I'm not a UFC guy. I don't care about yeah, UFC. I I'm just saying, maybe it's unfair to judge him based on one fight. If he lost three fights, I can maybe understand what you're saying, but it was just one. It was that one time. It's like that one time where you flub a line and we make fun of you for three years afterwards. It's that same effect. Ah, uh, the hat thing, yes. Yeah, except you keep perpetuating it by saying it weird. Hat. Hat. <laughs> I don't say it like that. Rat. <laughs> yeah, no, keep, keep digging that hole for yourself, Andy. I'm not digging that hole anymore. Okay, cool. What's next? Um, what else have I got here? No, that's it. Brilliant. Smackdown. Oh, yeah, that was the other thing I didn't... Yeah, so Smackdown, uh, basically, we were like, LOL, it's obviously going to be Luke Harper that's going to win this Battle Royal and there'll be a triple threat WrestleMania. Boy, did they either listen and take up yours, or were we wrong? Um, so basically, what happened was... It came down to AJ Styles and Luke Harper at the end. Uh, AJ Styles tries to suplex Luke Harper onto the ground for some reason. And then apparently both of them touch the floors for like at the same time. Unfortunately, if you go back and look at the tape, guess who hit the floor first? Harper. AJ Styles. Because Luke Harper was like, Dup! I'll go on the apron instead of going on the floor first. Uh, but they tried to make out with different camera angles that both of them hit the ground first. So the Battle Royale is a draw. And next week on SmackDown, it will be AJ Styles versus Luke Harper. The winner will be the number one contender. And I call shenanigans because this is going to go on and on and on until WrestleMania. What did I tell you? Yeah, you said that. I said this, and now they're doing it. Yeah. It's gonna be Orton versus Harper, uh, not Harper, fucking Wyatt at WrestleMania. Everyone calm down. And we have a timeline now, there's 80 days between now and Mania. So they want to oh. try and stretch this out, but make it interesting. Which is what they're doing. They're giving it delays each and every week, because they decided to have a pay-per-view two weeks after the Rumble. For some reason. I don't know why either, but still. They did that. They're not working with it, they're doing it to their own strengths, and I think it's good because Luke Harper is getting face pops. He's over as hell. He's gonna be in a match with AJ Styles. What? Who'd have thought that would happen? 
And also that battle royale set up more feuds like Corbin and Ambrose. So well, it, it, it added to the feuds. It added it to the feuds. So I'm okay with all of this, but that's not the only thing that happened on SmackDown. What else happened on SmackDown, Tab? Well, the show Something opens with Alexa Bliss. Show opens with Daniel Bryan, and Naomi in the ring. And everyone's chanting, "You deserve it, at Naomi," because that's the thing to do now. And everyone's like, "Everyone's really happy. Everyone's really emotional. Everyone's loving it. They're yucking it up." And then Naomi's like, "I gotta relinquish the title now." <laughs> Because he got a knee injury. So, great. Great. Isn't that, isn't that good? Isn't that awesome? Fucking you give it to Naomi, who has improved substantially. Whether she's great or not is debatable, but still, she's very good. And yeah, but couldn't she, during the match at the Elimination Chamber, go, I think my Lee is fucked. Your Lee is fucked? Ref, oh, not, not just... your Lee. Your Lee is the most important the, the, part God of your damn body. it! She's... Shut up! Her knee is, is uh, messed up. Couldn't she have just gone to the ref? I think my knee is messed up, and then like they could have called an audible and just be like, "Okay, no, me. I know up. your knee's messed up, but what about your knee? That's more important." Oh, shut up! All right, so it just seems it's almost as if she could have she could have gone uh, ref. My knee is really hurt. Really maybe hurt, she right? didn't know at the time, and maybe she didn't want to do that. Fine. Maybe she wants to get better and hold the championship for another ninety days, but that's not. It's not the important thing. The important thing is that she relinquished the championship and everyone was sad. Oh no, I was sad because I wanted to see her WrestleMania entrance. I would have been sick. Yeah. She comes How out... long is she out for? Um, a while. Oh dear. Yeah. She's not going to meet Mania, I don't think. So I'm sad. Okay. We're not going to get a cool rave with millions of people, but... They scheduled a match between former champion Alexa Bliss and former former champion Becky Lynch. That wasn't a good match. <laughs> yeah, kind of messy. Kind of sloppy at the end. It was yeah. wasn't great, but they put the belt back onto Bliss, who is now a two-time women's champion. And all is right in the world. Kind of. What are they going to do now? <laughs> what, are, what, what plans are there for WrestleMania now that Naomi isn't there? And I know Naomi's opponent could have been decided at any other point, and they could just point her off to Bliss, but still. You gotta think this throws a spanner in the works, baby, for what they planned. Yeah, because she's already feuded with Becky Lynch, isn't she? <laughs> yes. So yes, she has. Very, so you very can't... prolifically, yes. Yeah, so you can't do that. Mm. I mean, you could. Uh... That's not stopping Raw from doing the same feud 50 times in a row. Please don't do that. Um, Remember when they said we weren't we weren't going to see Sasha vs Charlotte anymore, and then on Raw they had Sasha vs Charlotte. Uh, whatever, man. Raw, you do you, okay? You do you. You be shit, except for a couple of segments. And SmackDown will continue to devote a lot of time with multiple storylines and multiple interesting athletes, rather than the same four. So yeah, SmackDown's women's scene is given a bit of a shake-up at the moment. Who do I want to see Bliss face at Mania? Mickey James. So you, you would turn Mickey Faison? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Put over Bliss like, just... in the main event, and then go go from there. Make a new star. Have they got anyone on NXT they could bring up? That they could bring up? Um... I mean, I, what about Asuka? What's Asuka doing nowadays? She's the champion. So she's undefeated champion. So so I don't think she should move up and then beat Bliss. This is what you do. All right, let's hear this okay. dumb decision. No. So if you don't want Asuka to lose, here's what you do: you call her up as NXT champion. And you're like, LOL, I'm Asuka, and I'm the NXT Women's Champion, and I want I I've defeated everybody now. I can't be bothered. Uh, now I want the WWE uh, SmackDown Women's Championship. I can't be bothered with this belt anymore, so I'm going to relinquish my title and go for your title. Or you could just do like a mania moment where she has both titles, and then she just has to get rid of the NXT one on NXT or something. And then that way, Asuka stays undefeated, stays super strong, and then you can just put the belt on some of the new people on NXT. Everybody wins! What about Bliss, though? 
she can lose to Asuka. Remember when she lost to Naomi and you freaked out? But it's Asuka. So? I don't know. She's an NXT, she don't well, need to move up and then beat Bliss. Like, you can do... She's a borderline heel anyway, so it's fine. You don't have to do that. What you could instead do is use someone that's already on the main roster. Because it's not like they have four women on Raw and then 20 women on SmackDown, right? There's a lot more depth of field there. There's a bigger variety of women to use. They'll be fine. They don't need to, they don't need to bring up NXT talents to do this. And even if they did, they're not going to bring up the main one. They're going to bring up a job that they don't really need down there. A Liv Morgan, maybe. Wait, well, isn't that the point of a developmental? That they, you build them up, you build them up, and then you put them on the main roster? Isn't that kind of the point? Yeah, that's why Mojo Rawley's there. Yes, well, that was a stupid decision, That's why okay? Bo Dallas is there. The, yeah, again, that's another why the stupid Ascension decision. Are there. Yeah, again, another stupid decision. What's your point? Don't know. Right. So, <laughs> you know, I think it'll be fine. I'm just sad. Because I wanted to see Naomi have a good WrestleMania entrance and also a good title reign, but nevertheless, they put it back on the best qualified person other than Becky Lynch. Yeah, I I don't know. I I I I I think you know. It's 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 just bad luck. You know, you can't do a lot about it. Um, Speaking of bad luck. There was yeah. another match on SmackDown involving the women. It was Nikki Bella versus Natalia in the final match that they're ever going to have ever. Hopefully, please, a Fool's Count Anywhere match. Which involved Natalia's head going through a, a, a TV. A mirror, Andy. Oh, uh, I thought it was... That wasn't a TV. That was a mirror. Uh, well, I saw a GIF of it, and I couldn't really... Because the GIF was so pixelated, I didn't understand what the fuck was going on. Yeah, they just have TVs backstage to throw Natalia through. Not like it was reflective, and also not a TV, you idiot. <laughs> okay. uh, seven years bad luck, I'm afraid, and we are moving on from that feud into apparently Maurice versus Nikki Bella. So probably getting that mixed tag match. I heard a rumor. Okay, what was the rumor? Oh, going off. No, Dad, I'm not answering the phone yet. Okay. Does it okay, ever so occur to you that you should probably put that on silent? I thought I did. It's very rude of you I'm to sorry. have that out when we're having a conversation face to face. We're not face to face. Shut up. Okay. What is I your rumor? Heard a, I have heard a rumor. Great. What is this rumor? The rumor is is that John is going to propose to Nikki. Oh. At, at WrestleMania. Whoa. Hence why they're doing the big tag match. Oh. So this is why we're not getting Undertaker and Cena, guys. <laughs> this is it. Love. We're gonna do That's the reason. Mix tag. And have the part-timers win. And then fuck off afterwards. After getting on one knee and going, Will you marry me? Yes. Love. That's why we're, we're not getting the, the dream match that we all want. Love. Are you jealous? I love. I get the feeling you might be a little bit jealous. I'm not jealous! What is there to not be jealous of? Strapping young lad like Nikki Bella. I'm strapping young... what? Getting proposed to by fit as fuck John Cena. Might have gotten those two mixed up. Maybe. I'm, yeah, you've got that the wrong way around. It's a I'm lovely basically. romantic moment at the, the show that's aimed at the casuals. WrestleMania isn't for us anymore. It's to draw people in. And the way you're going to do that is by getting the living meme to propose to the flagship woman. I don't like love! Why? That's not because a good I'm... way to get it in your system. You have to embrace it. You have to let people love you. And then you will be loved in return. That's why I don't like you. Because you don't let me. <laughs> Oh, that's not nice. It's not my fault that you don't let me like you. You say dumb shit all the time, and you annoy me I, all the time. It's because you I don't let put, love into your heart. Okay, I put a love filter on my webcam, and now I can't turn 
filters on. You can find us on Supla.com, <laughs> where we have all of the latest articles, and we have MP3 downloads of this show. And what else do we have there, Andy? Uh, we also have the Supla. Oh, fuck, I'm sorry. We I'm have the broadcast also, which happens yes. once a month at this rate. We might do an episode this week. Who knows anymore? I certainly oh, I, don't. I would quite like to do that. Um, okay, good. We're, also... we're doing one at the end of the week. What other websites do you want to tell people about? Uh, we are on the Supla. Uh, on oh Supla. my fucking god. I'm sorry, can Fuck I, like, me. I don't know how to turn oh this off. Oh my god, Wrestle oh, Pundit is off. where we get the news, and that's fine, because oh, yeah, that's Keelan's okay. website. We're also on Facebook, we're also on Twitter, and we're on Instagram, the Supla. It's the same name as everywhere else. We do merch, do we've got some exciting projects lined up in the future, and I, yes. uh, I can't wait Project. to d end this. Liam, come back. Look at this man, look at what he's doing. He's putting hard no, tools on his webcam, he doesn't know how to take com. it off. What? Go to Supla.com, I wrote an right, article, done. please go read it. I'm done. I have been Andy Quad. Coming back or what? <laughs>